This. Tyler, why do you why did you think it was so important to get the media down here and get it some exposure? Well, it's important that all Canadians know that when you go voting, when you vote for a party that respects First Nations treaty rights, charter rights, and indigenous rights, everybody in Canada benefits. When our treaty rights are honored, especially the aspect of sharing of the resources, those resource revenues that come from treaty lands, when that is honored and the, the band gets a percentage of the royalties, all that money goes back into the community. And there's billions of dollars that come from our treaty territory every year that is never shared with First Nations. And when a government honors the charter rights, mm -hmm. all Canadians benefit because the, the government is obligated to have First Nations consent before they do anything in terms of mining, uh, logging, whatever has to do with the environment. When they have First Nations consent, that's a built-in protection in terms of the environment. So when people go to vote, I think they should keep that in mind. If you vote for a party that respects treaty, charter, and inherent rights, you're voting for the benefit of all Canadians. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Now I have Kara Flanagan with me from the Green Party. Why do you think this meeting is so important? I, I'm so excited that um, our Anishinaabeg people are rallying together because at their sheer numbers, uh, approximately 15,000 potential voters could be a significant voice in this upcoming election. And I'm glad that they're um, encouraging everyone to participate. We want everyone to participate in this upcoming election. And, and you definitely have a chance in this election because uh, they want Harper out. And, uh, what do you have to offer them? Well, I think everyone uh, was rather impressed when they saw Elizabeth May in the most recent debates, and it really got our message out. And I think if people actually took a look at what the Green Party stands for, they would be very impressed. We are very active in trying to encourage people to get out to vote, and because if you don't vote, um, you actually are giving the pe person who does vote double the power. And I, I just want to make the saying that if you don't vote, it, it's not considered rebelling, it's not considered um, a protest, it doesn't count, and it's actually considered surrender. Mm -hmm. So we want people to get out and have their voices heard and participate in this election. Okay, thank you very much. I'm uh, Grand Council Chief Patrick Madawi from the Shnavik Nation. Been asked to come up and uh, you know, share some thoughts on the upcoming election and uh, and uh, encourage our citizens to get out and uh, and vote. Uh, we have a very critical uh, uh, election coming up, and I think it's very important that we uh, get some proper messaging out in advance of this election. Why do you think it's so important to get all these people out and get your message out to them? Well, you know, it's not even just First Nations issues that are uh, uh, troubling here right now. Because we have a government right now and a, and a prime minister who's using uh, legislation and policy and uh, hiding things in omnibus bills that even the ordinary Canadian doesn't know about. And uh, there's a lot of things happening that are going to impact uh, the future generations on uh, on uh, our environment, for example, is a big issue. Uh, but for First Nations, we have a government that's been very adversarial with us. They've spent millions and millions of dollars in court cases fighting us uh, to try to prevent us from exercising our rights. And uh, we have just a whole, a quite a wide, uh, a wide variety of issues. Do you mind if I ask you which party you feel is the most advantageous for you? Yeah, that's not, that's not why I'm here to tell anyone how to vote, uh, other than to say that, uh, you know, I think we, uh, we have a situation where 
First Nations vote in 51 ridings across Canada can have an impact on whether there's going to be a, a majority government or a minority government in place or perhaps kick out this government. And um, the impact is, is crucial. So what, what we're saying to people is, uh, you know, obviously it's your choice where you vote. Really uh, analyze uh, the candidates in your area, their platforms, and see who's got the best chance to defeat the Conservative candidate in that particular riding, because it's basically our message. Now I have Chief Dean Sayers from uh, Batchewana. Why is this so important to you? Well, my council is uh, really concerned, as are a number of our people, with the continual, it's like an onslaught of an erosion of our relationship with uh, the, the existing Canadian government. It's really unfortunate that um, that the relationship is, is so tedious right now. It's just so unbalanced. We don't see the spirit and intent of our relationship coming to fruition with this particular government. Um, we need to have Canadians rethink their, their government. And uh, it just so happens that uh, back in the early 1960s, uh, First Nations people across Canada were extended the invitation to participate in this government, the Canadian government, without any um, compromising of our own nationhood status, without any compromise of our existing treaty rights. So it's with some trepidation that some of our people have decided to participate in and I think there's value in people participating from a business perspective. It makes good business for our people to participate in the Canadian election. Who do you see? Which party do you see as being able to help you the most and help actually the people of Canada the most? I'm asking you to give yeah. me... There, and then you don't have to, but... Uh, I, I look at uh, the relationship with the Crown that the Canadian government has now inherited um, as being a non-partisan relationship. For us, it really doesn't matter which party gets in as long as they rise to the bar that's been set by the Crown. And if we look at a number of um, efforts that have been made in the last 30 years, there's more than enough mechanisms to be able to be measurable in the expectations or the outcomes that we see with our relationship. Mm -hmm. We look at RCAP, we look at um, the more recent uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission report. There are a number of mechanisms that can be good guides and we expect whichever government comes to, in, comes to, uh, comes to fruition in Canada that they truly uh, embrace the opportunity to create a more cohesive society where First Nations rights and the commitments and obligations of the settler governments are met so that Canadians can feel assured that uh, they're, uh, they're fulfilling all of their commitments that they were made, that were made on their behalf and for them and with them. But do you really see the Conservatives changing any of their beliefs and helping the Aboriginal people? I, I, uh, I have, in my own evaluations of the work that has happened or not happened, uh, I really believe there's been um, a calculated attack of our rights. When we look at the imposition of foreign legislation on us as Indigenous nations, uh, I really have to think hard about the the First Nations really going to meet and be a part of the solutions of the Conservative government. I don't think so. I think uh, what we've seen with the, the legislation that's been imposed on us without our consent has to stop. And uh, we're not going to see that stopping if we continue to be um, in a relationship uh, with uh, Stephen Harper and his Conservative government. It just is not um, meeting our expectations as a government and that particular government, the Canadian government, are not a treaty party. They are the administrator of the treaty relationship. Mm -hmm. They need to administer the treaty pop properly and be aligned with the spirit and intent. So I'm, um, my council has uh, issued a banned council resolution 
that encourages our people to vote in that election system from a business perspective that makes good business sense from our treaty relationship it just so happens that we have the ability to vote in their election right now and uh, in the meantime we don't have to compromise our nationhood status so I'm really I'm really um, I guess open to be able to encourage our people to vote and I can try to explain that to them and uh, help them understand. We've not historically voted, uh, a majority of our people voted in the, uh, the Canadian election, but from a business perspective, I believe we need to really consider and, uh, and encourage our people to possibly exercise their, their vote.